Hello everyone, Maxim from our TV agency here and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we are going to check how to recreate this masonry image filter inside your TV website. So first of all, uh, let's have a look at, uh, at how it works. So as you can see, we have uh, some filter buttons on the top and we created some dummy content here with images and they are all displayed in a masonry style. Okay, so let's just click on the green section. And as you can see, all the images are sorted by the green color. Same thing with the blue one, the yellow, the red. And we can come back to the home category. Um, as you can see, we have another effect here. That we, when, we click, when we click on the, on the category filter, the button gets an active status and we can just check in which category we are we are filtering in. So in, this is another thing that we are going to take care of in our function. And uh, another point, uh, we, this, um, this function, this uh, layout is totally compatible with the Lightbox uh, the D4D uh, function. So if we click in on the image, we will still have the Lightbox effect. It just doesn't conflict with, with our function. Okay, I think it's pretty much everything, and let's uh, dive into code. So, I created uh, this uh, test page with another uh, journey content. I have also included the menu that we created uh, last time on the on the previous tutorial, just to make sure it doesn't go in conflict with our script. So let's just enable Visual Builder on this page. And uh, the first thing we have to do is actually to import our JSON file. So let's just open the portability section. I'm going to click on the import. And if you are working on, a, on an existing website, make sure to toggle off this option replace existing content. We don't want to erase all the content of your page. And let's just drag our JSON file that I downloaded from the blog article. And I'm going to put it here. And just click on the TV import. Okay. Let's wait. Imports. Okay, just finished. So uh, you can see all the images being imported. By the way, we are we are using uh, pexels.com for the images, so we are free of use. Let's just save for now, and let's just check the front end and see if the changes are applied. I'm going to go back into the test page and just make a quick refresh. Okay, so our menu is still working, and let's just go back here, and yeah, we have our section. Great. Let's click on, on the filters, and it filters correctly. Great. Yeah, just, just check the responsiveness of, of it. So if we just change the size of our browser, it will automatically adapt to the size of the screen. Okay, so it goes from three columns to two columns and eventually to three columns. And the light box effect is working. Okay, everything is seems to work. So of course we are using dummy content here. You probably are asking uh, how to change the category and how to assign each image to the proper category. So let's go back in the code. And uh, let's just open our, our TV module, just to make things clear, I will open the layers here and over our section, our, search, our section is composed of three rows. The first one is the titles, and you can safely delete this, it's not, it's not of course needed. Um, the first one in the, is the filter button, so the one that you can see, this one, okay. 
And the second one is the filter content, so all our images. Great. So for now, just just open an image. And uh, let's check advanced classes. And we see we have two classes here, filtered item and green. The first one you don't you really don't need to, to delete it, you need to keep it. So uh, the JavaScript function we are using can identify this as, a, as a, a, an item that you need to filter. So you, you just need to keep it like that. But the green here corresponds to the category of the image. So for now, we just click on the green image. And if we click on the green, it's part of the green category. So it's filtered correctly. If now I come back to the builder and change it to red, let me let me, let me the, the test and let's save it and let's come back to the front end let's refresh okay we still have we should still have a red one but if we click on the red category now you can see that we have our red images and we click on the green one there is no more this woman with green background so it's working correctly the image has been assigned to the red category correctly. Okay, this is how uh, assigning categories works. You just have to go, let's go back to green here. In e each image, you want to filter and assign a category. You can, of course, create a new one. Let's say, for example, let's come back to the first image just to make things clear. You can come back here and change to the orange category. Okay, there is no orange images, of course. Let's just save. And let's see if our script dynamically creates this category. Let's refresh. And now, as you can see, we have an orange filter. All the other are still the same. Let's click on orange, and we have our image filter in the orange category. So, with this method, uh, it's not only sorting uh, the category as you wish, but it creates the category that it's missing. So the script will go uh, on each image, pick up the classes, and create the ones that are existing. OK? So let's go back and, and write green, just to be, to, to be as neat as possible. And if we refresh, we won't have the orange category anymore. Okay, works like it's supposed to be. Okay, so the next step, we are going to to check the filter button. As you can see, on the back end, uh, we are not seeing uh, the real one, right? So uh, the old green, blue, yellow, red are not visible in the, in the back end. That's because in the back end, we, we can't run uh, custom uh, JavaScript uh, if it's not using a custom model. So since we are, we are all writing our code inside a code module, the, the script won't actually run. So we are using this example button. It's a filter button, it's a default one. But this button won't actually display in the front end. But we are using this uh, example one just to make you see the, the styles that will be inherited in all your visible buttons, okay? So we are actually using a call to action module here. As you can see, it's a call to action here. And if you will go to the design and button style, you can see you can style the button as you want. So mm, let's just change. Uh, this one to uh, I don't know to black okay. the button text. You can also, of course, change the over. Let's change. Let's keep it that way for now, and let's change here the background color and let's make it uh, black also. Okay, and the button text should be oh let's say this and the color. Let's make it black also and on the over effect we want it to be like that so let's just 
Let's make it that. Okay. Let's keep it that way. Okay. Let's just save for now. And go back to the front end. Okay. Show that a bit. Okay. And now, as you can see, all our buttons are uh, have a black background color, and the over effect is still uh, correct. But if we click, we can see the active uh, styles are still the one uh, that we used before. So how can we manage the active style? Here we really need to open the CSS file right here. And on the first rows, you can see these three CSS variables. They are managing our styles for active buttons. So it should be uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, I just used uh, easy convention. So active button text color. This will be the, the text color when the button is active. The active button background color and the active button border color. So if we change, let's make an example and we want, um, let's make it here. Yeah. And let's make the background color FFS, FFS, white. And same thing here. And let's just save, save it for now. So we will have a text color black, a background color white, and border color white. Okay, let's just refresh the front end. And now, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure. If it's if the color was the correct one, but the the active one, the active color, are now uh, white, white background and uh, black text. Okay, and it works correctly. As you can see, the over effect is still uh, this, uh, this little pink color. Of course, you can go uh, to V open settings and change the other color here. So the background is all pink here. Let's make the, just for the fun of it, let's just, just make it white on all, uh, green on over. Let's just save. And now the, the over background should be Green and it is, and if I click it, it's just a white background as expected. Okay, of course you can change all the property here. You can change not only the colors, but you can say the spacing. You can change the border. Uh, you can change, for example, we should have a, a border somewhere. No. Yeah, our okay, but yeah, maybe in the bottom, sorry. Um, we have a radius of uh, 50 pixels. Let's just make zero for now. So we have a square button. Oops, sorry. Well, uh, just save. And let's go to the front end. And we will now have square buttons. Okay, and it works as expected. Okay, uh, I'm not diving too much in the in the GS file and the CSS. The, I'm just going to open it and, and make a quick review of it. But uh, it's quite it's a bit of a bit complex. But uh, yeah, uh, if you have fun to check how I created this uh, JavaScript function, just uh, just go ahead. And of course, we are importing the external library. So in this case, idle.js. And we also uh, import this image loaded uh, file just to avoid any, any layout issue when your image are loading. And uh, yeah, basically, we, we, we create um, the, the grid. And, uh, and we import all the categories and create the buttons from here. And we have 
appending all the buttons inside the previous um, the call to action module. And once it's done, once the buttons are created, we are just initializing the, the, the isotope uh, library and we are targeting our selectors and make sure they filter up they should. Okay, this is all uh, custom in JavaScript code. If you if you have fun to read it, uh, go ahead. But I'm not going to, to go into much details right here. Okay, I think it's everything. I covered everything. Uh, let me know in the comment below if this uh, is uh, useful for you and uh, if you have any question and uh, if you just want to say hi and uh, and connect with me uh, just do it in the comment in uh, in youtube thanks everyone and uh, we'll catch up on the next uh, tutorial bye bye